Hello and welcome to the Huntron CAD import YouTube video. This is to give you a demonstration of how CAD data can be used to create a test in Huntron Workstation. So to get started, we have Huntron Workstation open on your screen. And then we also use another piece of software from a company called Unisoft. It's called Pronto View Markup. So let's bring that up. This software is used to read the source CAD file um, into this software and then we can do some uh, manipulation and then export an XML file that is used in Huntron Workstation. So let me show you how this works. Uh, with the Unisoft software, we'll go to the file and we'll just do a smart open. This allows you to just browse to a folder and the Unisoft software will look in that folder for available CAD files. So we'll select that folder, click OK, and then you see all the CAD files I have stored in that particular folder and the one we want is this one, this 7789 Rev A. So we'll click OK, and it'll import that file into the, the Pronto View Markup software. So there you can see on the left is the top side view, and on the right is the bottom side view. All right? You see, there's not much on the bottom side. So um, when we create our test in Workstation, we're not going to include the bottom side. There's really no value in doing that, but we will do the top side. So one thing we do need to do here is to rotate this board 90 degrees because I'm going to be mounting the board into the prober with it rotated from this position. So to do that, you would just go to the edit menu and select rotate board. And each time you do that, it will rotate the board 90 degrees. So this is the orientation that I want to have uh, in my prober. The next thing you would do would be to select your two alignment points that are used by the access prober for position of the board within the prober area. And we'll select those points here in the Pronto View Markup software. To do that, I'll zoom in on a point that I want to use for the first alignment point, And I will just select uh, maybe a pin on U4. So I'll zoom in on that, go to the test fixture menu, select Mark Reference 1. Hopefully you can't quite see that off the screen. My apologies, it says Mark Reference 1 and we'll click on that. We can zoom back out with the zoom out button and then I'm going to select another point over in this area to use as the second alignment point so you can zoom in on that area. Again, go to the test fixture menu. You can see mark reference 2 and I'll just select the pin on the right side of R12. So there is our second alignment point. One last thing we need to do is to create a origin or select an origin for the board to be referenced against when we import it the XML file. Now typically this origin point is in the far bottom right corner of the board and there's really nothing down there that would work well for me to select because you want to include um, within that point er everything above and to the left of your point needs to be within that area. So I will go ahead and create a point so you can go to the edit menu and select make point and I'll just put a point way down here in the bottom right corner. I'll go ahead and zoom in on that point so you would just drag a box around that area. You can see my new point. We'll go to the edit menu and select set origin. So we'll just click on that mark and it's now set as our board origin. The next step is to go ahead and export the XML file that will be used by Huntron Workstation. To do that you go to the test fixture menu select Unisoft XML and then save that where you wish. I'm just going to go ahead and call it, I'm going to replace one I had created earlier, the 077789A, you can see XML extension, save, I'll replace that earlier one. Okay, the last thing you need to do is to save the F2B file, that's the native uh, Pronto View markup file. So you go to file and save as, I'll just use the same name, the, F, the 7789Rev A, F2B file, and save that. And again, I'll just replace the one I had created earlier. Okay, so that's all we would need to do in the Pronto View Markup software. So we'll just get that out of the way and now jump into Huntron Workstation. So the first step of bringing the CAD data into Workstation is to give it a database to come into. So we'll go ahead and create a new, new database using the Add New button. And here's our Add New board. So we'll just give it the same name 07 7789. A. I'll call it Rev A. How about that? Rev A like that. And then click OK. And we'll save that into the uh, the CAD file or the boards file. Alright, so now we have a database created. The next thing you would do is to go ahead and go to File and select Import Unisoft XML. So we'll click on that. And this brings up the 
I'll bring back that over here for you. This brings up the Huntron XML import um, importer application. So the first step is to browse to the XML file you created earlier. And that would be this one right here. We'll open that. And then also browse to the F2B file that you created from Unisoft. So we'll select that and open that. And then we'll pre-process this information to make sure the syntax is correct. All right, so the, the process is complete. Now, I only wish to do a component test on this particular circuit board. So when I do my import options, I'm only going to select a component import for the top side. But I could also do a component import for the bottom side. And you can also create a net-based sequence as well for both the top and the bottom. And that would essentially create a sequence with only the board nets uh, within that sequence. Um, that's not what I wish to do at this point, but that is possible. Um, I'm going to discuss a little bit um, as we go down these options here. So I'm going to import a component top sequence. You can select which slot the board will be mounted into within your prober. I'll be using the middle slot. Now, if you were working with a access DH or DH2, there are functions available for importing for a two-headed prober. One of those is to select a two-headed prober with a common lead. That means you'll be using just one head of the prober to probe the board, and then you'll be using a common lead attached to the board. That's not typical use for a two-headed prober, so that wouldn't be selected. And then also down here in the component options, if you are using a two-head prober, you can tell the software to probe the two and three pin devices directly across them. Means, for example, a resistor would, would put one head on one side of the resistor and the other head on the other side. So it would probe directly across these components. Or you can probe the two and three pin devices to a common that is selected up here. So you would select a common point that the one head would go to and then the other two pins would be probed by the uh, remaining head to probe uh, the two pin and three pin uh, devices. So, okay, but I'm not going to do that. So we're gonna disable that off. So we'll be doing a component import and I want to either select the vias as components. Um, that would mean that any vias on the circuit board would be imported as components. And I don't care to do that. I only want just the components. So I would leave this select um, unselected. The test points has components that will look at the XML file and look for any um, pins that are assigned a, a, an attribute of test point. Those test points are created through another file imported into the ProntoView markup software called a probes file. Now I didn't do that, so I will not have any pins marked as test points. So um, I'll leave that unchecked. Now if I was to import a net sequence, we'll enable the net sequence temporarily here for a net top sequence. I do have some net options here. You can control if the pins and vias are used for possible probe locations on that net, or if you also have test points included in the XML, you can mark those as being imported into the, um, the test. You can set a limit on the number of nodes or pins that come in for each net. Um, in some cases, ground and voltage lines uh, nets can have a huge amount of pins or nodes. So you may want to limit how many are coming in. I'll typically limit that to like 50 or so. All right. You can control which side of the board you prefer to do your probing on when you do a net import. Notice that top is selected here. That's because I've already, I'm only doing a top side sequence. And then you can control the priority of which points on that net get priority over others as far as what is selected to, as a point to probe. So if you have test points, um, pins and vias, a test point would be selected before a pin would, and then a pin would be selected before a via would. And you have several different uh, combinations that are available here. So you would select the one that works best for you. You can order the, rep, the, the nodes um, for each net by their reference designator. And this gives you some control on what you feel might be a better location on the board to probe a particular net than another one uh, based on its reference designator of the component. So if you feel capacitors um, are better than resistors as far as probing a net, then you can put a C reference designator before the R one. All right, so you can, so essentially you would create a list over here of which components you want to have priority over the others as far as what might get selected as the pin to probe on a particular net. Uh, I'll close that. I'm not actually going to do that, so I'm not doing a net import. You can also include only nets of particular components. So if I only wanted the nets of AR1 and AR2 to be included in my sequence, uh, my net sequence, then I would select those and only 
uh, nets that go to these two components would be added to the sequence. All right. You can also tell the software to exclude nets if you uh, wish. So there may be nets on here that you don't want uh, to be brought into the sequence at all. Since I'm not doing the net import, I will unselect those. Given all these things here, I'm going to uncheck the net top sequence because I don't want to do a net import. I'm only want to create a component uh, import. So we'll click the process button and it'll go ahead and create my sequence. So the process is complete. We'll click close. It now switches back to the workstation software. There we go. And now you see we have a new sequence added to the board. So now that we have all the components and everything in the uh, software, we can go ahead and do some uh, some uh, work with the alignment points. And I selected two alignment points. If I need to know what those are, I can go to my edit menu and say, all right, I was using R4 pin 1 and R12 pin 1 as my alignment point. So I'll click OK. Now these were pre-selected, but I still need to take the camera on the prover. Let's uh, size this down a little bit, a little bit large. There we go. So I'll select alignment number 1. Click OK. Now the camera is going to try to go where it thinks the alignment point might be, but generally it's never all that close. So I'll just go ahead and click in the camera image to navigate the camera over to that particular component. And I believe it was down here on this resistor. And it was right here in the center of R4. So what we do is get it lined up as precisely on the center of that component as you can. I'm going to go ahead and microstep that in here, uh, maybe 40 microns at a time. Move slightly to the left. And then maybe a slight amount down. There we go. So we'll set that. It automatically increments to number two for us. And of course, again, it's not very close. So I'll just go ahead and navigate the camera over to that uh, resistor we showed earlier. I believe it was on R12 on this far side here. So again, we'll go right to the center of the pad and then micro step that down a little bit to the left and maybe a little bit down again. There we go. It looks pretty good right there. So we'll set that. Now an important step after you set your alignment points is to go to the teach tab and I'll select my component. Um, let me redock this. I'm going to select component AR, one of the, the ICs, AR1. And then go to pin number one of that. Now we want to see the probe go right to the center of the pin, and it looks pretty darn good. Now notice it's going over the, the over the pin of the device. It actually is going to the center of the pad. The center, this pad is quite long, so the probe is, is actually positioned over the center of the pad. Okay, so this looks good. Let me try one more component pin. We'll go to pin seven and make sure that it looks good there as well, and that does look good. So okay, so I'm happy with my placement of the probe. So now I want to tell the software that this is going to be my permanent position for the circuit board. So to do that, I would go ahead and go to the realign tab, select alignment number one. Now I don't really particularly like this as to use as an alignment point, so I'm going to select a fiducial mark on the board to use as the alignment point. And there's one down here in the far left corner, right here. Let's go ahead and select this one. And that looks pretty good. So we'll set that. We'll do the same thing with number two. There's a fiducial mark up in the corner of the board. So we'll navigate the prober camera over to that fiducial point. The realign allows us to either use the same alignment points or if we wish we can select new ones. So I'm going to select this other one here on the upper left. And maybe micro step that just slightly up. and set. So, so once that's set, go ahead and click on the Save button, and these will become your new alignment points. All right. So the next step would be to teach the up and down position of the probe as it goes up and down between component pins. So to do that, we'll go to the Teach Height tab. And we'll be selecting the up and down position for the entire sequence. So all the components in the sequence will have the same Z up and Z down. So we redock this. I do have a camera pointing at the board, so let's go ahead and start that. So there it is. So what we can do is select a component pin. Uh, let's go ahead and select um, 
AR3, or R3 is fine. Select a pin number. And then we'll lower the probe tip down. So we'll go at a large step first of all. So in the camera view, you can see the probe tip coming down. The up position will be the probe, the distance the probe will lift between pins as it probes a component. So it needs to be high enough to get over the tallest probe component I'm actually going to probe, which would be one of these capacitors. So I've got the probe high enough right now to get over the capacitor as it goes from pin 1 to pin 2. So you would set that as your sequence up. And now I'll go ahead and move it down to make contact with the board. So as soon as it makes contact, we should see a signature on the on the board. So there you go. Sometimes we'll go ahead and compress the probe just a little bit more. I'll give it a small amount farther down to make sure we get good contact. And then save that as the sequence Z down. Say yes to that to save. Okay. So what you can do now is go ahead and check the position to see if it's probing correctly. I'll just go ahead and click the check button. We'll see a probe one side, probe the other. The probing looks good. So I'm happy with my up and down positions. Now one thing I do want to point out is that in some cases, when the, the, when the uh, probe goes to probe some of these devices, it's not going to be in the optimum position. And I will go back to uh, the component AR1. We looked at this earlier in the teach mode. We saw that the pin position wasn't optimum as far as where we would want to probe. So I'll show you what I mean here. I'll go to pin number one on AR1. And you notice it's going to the center of the pin. I mean, the center of the pad, sorry. I would rather much have it probe on the edge of this pad out here. So what you can do is the software allows you to create an offset from the pin center and add that to the component or the, the pin placement for the probe. So I'll go ahead and put my cursor where I want to see the probe to be. And notice over here we have a mouse position. So what I'll do is I'll put the probe where I, or the cursor where I want it to probe and look at the distance away I am from the crosshairs. So we're about 850 microns. All right, so I want to move the actual probe position 850 microns from where they currently are. So to do that, you would go to AR1. I'm going to go to the group edit. Bring that so you can see it. And then what you would do is select AR1. In fact, AR2 is the same type of device. And so I'll just go ahead and select both of these and apply the offset to those. So we'll go to all pins. And then the offset distance is right in this area here. So I want to move about 850 microns distance. And then you would select the type of package it, that that particular component is. In this case, it's going to be an SMD DIP. That's a surface mount device dual inline package. So we'll select that and then click process. So what will happen is both AR1 and AR2 will have their pins offset. So that process is complete. We'll close that. And now we'll come back to AR1 and go to a pin number. And notice that it's now offset from the center. Just to show you how it affected AR2, we'll go ahead and select AR2 in the tree and go to the teach position for that one. Bring it back up again and go to like pin number two for that AR2. And notice how it's offset there. So this is where it's actually going to probe. Okay, so now at this point, I'm ready to scan my board. And there are plenty of videos on our YouTube channel that show us scanning with probers, so I won't actually go into it on this video. But please do check out the other videos on the Huntron YouTube channel. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the uh, YouTube comments. And thank you for watching.